Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Best Thing with me, Daniel Johnson. This week's guest is Bethia. You may know her from this podcast. Yes, Bethia Beats, bringing us some of the best in brand new music. But she isn't just doing that. She's a singer, songwriter. She plays the piano. There isn't much she can't do. She also dropped her EP with electronic R&B producer Mort called Part One, showing off her soulful tones and her amazing vocal acrobatics. And you can stream it right now. Well, not right now. Wait until after the interview, of course. Uh, Beth is going to be talking about her best things to do with travel, film and TV, food, music and something random. We've also got Adam's Fat Chicken and of course, Bethia's Beats. I think it's about time we start. Up next, Fat Chicken with Adam Harris and then Bethia's interview. Hi guys, Adam the Fat Chicken here doing the fact checking for you. Um, Monster Munch, you know the pickled onion, the beef and the other one. Um, they come and they look a bit like either monsters or feet. Some people think they're monsters, some people think they're feet. Find out what they are at the end of the podcast. <laughs> it's Bethia in the building. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this. This is amazing. Oh my gosh, my, it's my pleasure. Like I'm so excited to be here. It's like old school times, you know, working together. Because uh-huh. obviously we worked together for the BBC. BBC. Oh my yeah, gosh, we yeah. Did, yeah. Uh, BBC Berkshire. And they're keeping it local, <laughs> keeping it local. And you had your own segment on there. Only because of you. I mean, literally, <laughs> I, I, couldn't, I couldn't have done any of this whole radio thing without you. So, I mean, amazing. stop it. I mean, <laughs> you were good. I mean, if you're rubbish, trust me, we would have just got someone else. You know what I mean? But you were really good. Or actually, no, you just kept on coming back every week. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was just back. I was like, hi, guys. I'm here again. <laughs> I have to say, you did perform the most I know. on yeah. the show. I did feel kind of bad. I just kept going, right, okay, so uh, it's my turn again to sing my song. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, but also, you were promoting so many other people I think it was fine yeah definitely I feel like I I have some hugely talented friends and I just feel like they deserve to be heard they deserve to be seen and heard in their music well the DBA boys actually gave you the name of Bethia Beats yeah literally in the studio (laughs) while we were on air so it's crazy I want to get your own podcast as well would you do your own podcast I yeah I'm like coming round to the idea definitely I think I'm maybe at first I was like oh gosh will that be like too much but I'm now like loving this idea and Dan is just being very supportive of oh, me so stop it. <laughs> oh, well, I, I'm gonna ask the DBA boys to see if they could do like a bit of a trail for you oh, like a little gosh, bit of a jingle yes. <gasps> that would be amazing because they started it so it's yeah fine. exactly they would smash that honestly <laughs> they definitely would so this is my new podcast it's called best thing and we're going to be talking about some of the best things in your life we're going to start with TV and film. Mm-hmm. Have you been watching watching much TV? Um, I have more so now. I'm not really like a TV or series kind of gal. I feel like it just takes me a while to kind of get into something. But I've been watching uh, normal people. Oh, I feel like there's a lot of nakedness in that. Is it, are you watching with your parents or yeah. are you by yourself um, watching it? No, I'm definitely not watching with my parents. Um, <laughs> definitely not. I was made sure to watch that just by myself. Um, but yeah, it's it's really, really great. I I felt very invested in both of the main characters. I felt like because they're kind of at a similar age to me-ish, uh, I felt like they were just really relatable. Um, I mean, tell yeah. me a little bit about normal people because I watched one episode and then I found it like just a tiny little bit slow um yeah I I completely agree I mean I mean when I'm watching something I feel like I have to be watching something where I'm like kind of watching every single part like it's not just on in the background so I yeah it's basically following like a a love story basically they meet um at school and Connell is like he's quite well known in the school like quite popular popular, yeah Yeah, he's a popular boy but he's also (laughs) kind of very relaxed and chilled and I think that's why people just get on with him whereas Marianne is um a little bit more like well she's she's quite feisty at the start um and people kind of take a step back from her and go a bit like oh okay she's kind of not really the most friendly of people um but basically they fall in love and then it kind of just follows them as they're growing up and kind of the struggles that you face 
as a teenager, um, like mental health things as well. So I don't know. I just felt like it was just really well done. It spoke to you. It did. Yeah. And and I think also the Irish accent kind of helps as well. You know, that's always <laughs> that nice always to listen helps. to. Right. Can, can you do an Irish accent? Um, top of the morning to you. I mean, the most cliche. <laughs> thing you could I say think of it's anything fine else. We'll, we'll make sure we'll, we'll send that to all the irish people that was who listen also to this really, podcast really bad so <laughs> don't please i'm not you may as well said tardy tree you know what <laughs> i mean it's fine it's i know fine. oh god i mean something like that i mean, a lot of people have been watching it a lot of people have been watching like killing eve a lot of mm. people watching uh, tiger king did you see any of that yeah, i watched craziness i did not watch oh well, i haven't watched it but i've watched a <laughs> little not bit missed out. on no i know i've I watched a tiny bit on Gogglebox. Right. Um, that was enough. I love Gogglebox. Yeah, that was enough for me. It was It was also the part where, uh, I don't want to give too many spoilers away, but there was a very gruesome I mean, if you've not seen it by now, sorry. Of, well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Basically, somebody gets their arm chewed off and it's yeah. just, yeah, it's quite... Uh, but they seem not to mind. And no. then carried on working there. Yeah, and uh, the guy just kind of goes into the gift shop and is like, okay, we've had a bit of an incident. Um, Joe Exotic. Yeah, Joe. <laughs> lovely. Well, I mean, I don't know how lovely he is because I haven't seen it. But, He's actually um, in prison, so well, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Questionable. <laughs> um, uh, so it's funny because you said you're not sort of a TV, you know, watch, you don't watch many mm-hmm. series and stuff like that because mm-hmm. obviously you're into music a lot yeah. and we'll be getting into that a little mm-hmm. bit later. But... When it comes to sort of films, do you remember any childhood films that kind of were like, oh, I remember watching that over and over and over again or Ooh. anything like that, like Disney or I... were you kind of more outdoorsy? Did you do stuff? Mm. Is that was the... See, my mum would say that I was not an outdoorsy child <laughs> at all. Like I was the one where all of my other siblings would be dying to go to the park and I'd be like, mum, mm, can we just stay here? Can I just stay here? I'm just, I just don't really fancy going outside. I don't really fancy <laughs> interacting with other children. You know, I'm not that kind of person. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I don't know. I, I feel like because I had two sisters, we probably, we watched a lot of Disney when we were younger. Yeah. Um, but... I mean, yeah, now it's more for me about music and podcasts and that sort of thing. Well, but that's funny you should say that. I know. That's, that's what we're going to be talking about. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so right now I'm going to say your best thing when it comes to TV is normal people? At the moment, yeah, definitely. At the moment. Definitely. Uh, next up, we're going to be talking about travel. So, Bethia, travel. Yes. Um, many holidays when you were younger? Yes. I mean, we have a little house in Portugal. A li- well, I say a house. It's like a, a little villa, um, which we've had since I was about like six. Okay. Um, so, we go there every year. I mean, there's six of us. So, we all squeeze into this tiny little um, villa by like a pool <laughs> and the beach. Um, so, it's, yeah, it's a bit of a squeeze. And like my little brother sleeps in the lounge but um it works he's and not so little now he's grown up oh yeah actually that's very true he is like taller than all of us <laughs> um so but he doesn't mind he's fine but it's, as long as there's sunshine it's fine <laughs> oh, is there like any kind of sort of traditions that you do like obviously you go on holiday and do you play any board games by any chance <laughs> oh gosh i knew you were gonna bring this up <laughs> we <laughs> well our favorite on holiday actually is um like uno oh yeah and we have like uno spin there's another one. Oh, do you know what? There is actually like a travel version of Monopoly, which uh, Dan will be so excited to bring up. But uh, basically, our family doesn't play Monopoly, right? No, apparently. you don't. How, how do you play it? <laughs> I mean, I don't really know. We just, we deal out the houses. The properties. The, the properties. Yeah. Uh, before we started and then we do like a little gambling thing as to like who gets them like, wait, wait, wait. And, like let, a swap let, let's, let's take this back okay. so <laughs> when the game starts I mean the, the aim of the game is to get as many properties as you can oh, yeah. you've already got the properties yeah. and then what happens then I, well we just <laughs> um, to be honest I'm not that great at Monopoly so uh, <laughs> we yeah we basically kind of just deal them out and then see who, like try and get pairs and try and get uh right the, what's it what is it called like sets yeah try and get sets yeah because then you can build houses and hotels and stuff like that yeah on there. Um, do you get that far or do you just well, swap it out we, get the cards usually it ends up in an argument anyway so we haven't actually got to the end anyway so yeah. that sounds like the perfect family holiday to <laughs> yeah. be honest travel monopoly don't play it play it your way yeah play, play it, it the your way, way. Play it it's the way. way. <laughs> yeah that sounds about right i mean yeah uh, so okay um holidays 
and, and going away we're not really doing that too much at the moment yeah. but hopefully looking forward to the future that we can do that yes. more are there any kind of holiday destinations that you would love to go to that you've not been to oh i would absolutely love to go to somewhere like bali Ooh. or uh the maldives <laughs> or is that in is that yeah well, i mean let's just let, let's not just ge- this is not just geography this is just uh oh God, this I is just travel did geography so a level so uh, did you? i should know that <laughs> Well, Where is the talk about the places it's fine. In We'll find out. Do you know what is what is great? Because in the in the podcast, we have a little bit of a fat chicken in the podcast. So uh-huh. where is the Maldives? The Maldives is a small island nation in South Asia located in the Arabian Sea of the Indian Ocean, southwest of Sri Lanka and India, and about a thousand kilometers from the Asian continent. Thanks. <laughs> uh, he's just told us, which is amazing. Um, so those sort of places, Bali and Maldives, they're mm. like tropical islands yeah, and just stuff somewhere like that. idyllic did you go and yeah idyllic yeah. yeah did you go anywhere um sort of in and around the uk when you were younger um, or, i guess if you were in portugal all the time i mean you know, well have to. we were very lucky to to go to portugal um but we went to like cornwall and devon um we've never really been like a camping family like at all <laughs> me neither um so that was just a complete no-no so we'd always just stay in like a hostel or like just a, a little cottage or something but I, I think they are my favorite types of holidays somewhere in the UK where it's like just super chilled you've got the sea you've got all these little cute shops I think that's just like my perfect little getaway I think my think it is how many times have my parents bought a bucket and spade because <laughs> I, I feel like we never brought the same one back no, I feel like there was always a new one yeah it just got lost <laughs> just no idea where it went it's like you can keep that there that's where Dan was <laughs> on the beach <laughs> we just gave it to the next children yeah. that game playing it's fine yeah, it's so I mean it's funny because when we have these memories and going away and you know it sounds idyllic as you would mm-hmm. say um, <laughs> you know going to places like Portugal and then also holiday in the UK and stuff do you have any nice sort of memories from that sort of time of you know travelling around or have you been on holiday with your friends you know have you been abroad or anything with friends um, or? well I, I've not actually been on holiday with friends because that just hasn't happened yet. I mean, it's been in the works for a while, but it just hasn't quite um, happened. But I regret all of my friends with the holidays, <laughs> so don't worry I about know, it. I know, I'm fine. trying it's not to have drama. any regrets, so that's why. Um, but me and my sister Eloise and my mum have gone to Paris. Ooh. That was for my 21st. Nice. And that was, I remember that. Oh. I remember seeing it on, on Instagram and I was like, I'm not liking that picture. <laughs> just because I'm jealous. Jealous. How nice was Paris? <laughs> oh gosh, it was so, so nice. We had we had a couple of days there. I mean, I wish I could stay. Could have stayed longer. Um, it was just like the perfect amount of buzziness and tourist things that we did. Because like, I'd never been before. Um, so it was just nice to kind of get the Paris vibe. Can and I you feel speak like I fit French? In. Uh, wee wee. <laughs> That's Je m'appelle it. Daniel, you know. Je m'appelle <laughs> Bethia. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I like the dialect even, there. Even uh, just said my name wrong, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so well, when it comes to sort of uh, holidays and with families and, 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 and going away and stuff like that, actually, you're, you kind of like being at home. I am a very, yeah, a very home bird. I like to be at home with kind of all of the comfortable things that I'm used to. Um, I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I love to go elsewhere and travel and see new things but I think I'm always kind of you know that feeling when you're always kind of glad to kind of go back home like at the airport you're like "Ah, I'm quite excited to like get back in my bed and just like just be comfortable where I where I normally like hibernate (laughs) have a duvet because when I go on holiday for some reason there's no duvets anywhere yeah no it's a sheet (laughs) just just one sheet Um, and the itchiest like throw ever (laughs) I'm so cold but I don't want to put this on my body and the air con's on and it's just like blowing at me (laughs) (laughs) one of the things that have been happening in this podcast best thing is that um, when people kind of do their categories they're like oh I said about five different things and I think that's great because there's so many good best things about travel in the first place it's hard to pick just one thing I think if and you, you had to and I'm going to force you to mm-hmm. pick one thing when it comes to travel where's your favorite destination you've been to okay I definitely have an answer for this one so we went to California Ooh. on a two-week road trip which was uh basically to kind of not go to Portugal basically <laughs> it was like oh one somewhere time different. The other where way. we could go different yeah, <laughs> go to somewhere different um but that was amazing like just to see the kind of LA lifestyle was just so cool um and we went to we kind of stopped off at lots of different places so we went to Santa Monica first and then San Francisco uh and then a couple of other places along the way 
um, and like Yosemite, and then we came back down and did Disney World, Disneyland. Um, so it was quite, it was, it was just amazing, like the best experience ever. Um, but I kind of wish I was doing that now. I wish I was. I mean, there. everyone does. I know. Yeah, I wish I was uh, somewhere beautiful like that. But um, but do you know what? Reading's beautiful too. I mean, Reading's yeah, Reading's great. It's a lovely place. It is. So I'm going to say <laughs> Bethia's best thing about travel is California. Yes, definitely. Perfect. We're going to be talking about food next. Bethia. <laughs> yep. Food. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, my favorite thing. How is, um, what is your, some of your favorite foods? What is the best thing about food for you right now? Um, I mean, food at the moment is, I mean, it's just staring at you in the cupboard at the moment in particular. So, I mean, it just needs, it's just saying, eat me. So I'm just <laughs> going to eat it. <laughs> I found myself uh, being on uh, video calls with friends and doing quizzes and stuff. Yeah. And I was being lazy and I had a pot noodle in the cupboard. Mm. And I was sat and they were like, oh, is that your dinner? And it, it looked like it was my dinner. It wasn't my dinner. Oh, it, no. was, it was my post dinner. Yeah, I'd already eaten it. Was a, yeah, it's great. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Having two dinners. That's I'm all about that. So would you say you're more of a starter person, a main person, Ooh. a dessert person? I'm or would much, you go with food? I'm definitely a savory person. So, well, I mean, I, I, <laughs> well, well, I, like I mean, yeah, well. this is the thing. So <laughs> if I'm going out for dinner, then I would want a starter, obviously a main, but then to share a pudding. Oh, um, I'm like a, I not like... a friend of mine because I'm, I'm not sharing any <laughs> okay, puddings. We won't fine. be going out for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just buy two puddings. So you can have half of yours. It's fine. <laughs> exactly. I just feel like if I get a whole pudding, sometimes I just, I won't be hungry enough for it at the end. So I'd rather share it and then go, okay just you know you can finish that and share it basically <laughs> cuisine wise i mean a lot of people have been doing takeaways and stuff yeah. like that lately have you had any takeaways lately what what's your takeaway go to if have. you're going to the draw of many many menus that we actually look at don't look at and just get the same thing we get every time um we we love um like a thai in Ooh. our house yeah nice. so we we can't, i can't Mm, can you remember remember <laughs> where it's from I, um, you don't have to name check them but that's fine. we uh we have we, we like a good pad thai um red thai curry mm. oh gosh that is my favorite what rice do you go for what sort of rice do you eat? um like a sticky, I'm a sticky like a, rice, yeah, yeah definitely 100 oh. percent. i think we might need to get takeout now I yeah i know <laughs> Literally, but it's quite warm, so maybe a red Thai curry is not the greatest option. That, that is where that is very true. I mean, food, food's a funny thing because you've been to different places around the world, mm-hmm. and uh, and it, even if you just go places around this wonderful country. Yeah. Um, there's sort of traditions and different foods and stuff mm, like that. Totally. Where is your go-to when it comes to just like cooking? Can you cook? I love to cook. Yeah, oh, cool. I do. We we in our family at the moment we have uh, a schedule as to because there's six of us. We have. <sighs> Uh, one person do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and it wow. kind of goes like what that. What day's your day? My day is Wednesday. Wednesday. So what day okay. are we today? We're on a, 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 a Tuesday, a, I think so. Who knows now? Yeah, it's fine. Isn't it? We just call them days <laughs> yeah, now, we don't just, we? Yeah, it's fine. exactly. <laughs> um, so I, I'm, I don't really have a set thing that I cook, um, but... Yeah, it's kind of different every time. Whatever we've kind of got in the fridge, I just try and whip something up. Can you do that? You can just do like a ready, steady cook. Go, I've got a red onion, a pepper yeah. and some tuna. Here we go. <laughs> Basically, it's Here's like a cake. My own You're like, TV. what? <laughs> How have you made a cake? <laughs> I've also been loving baking at the moment. Have you? Definitely, yeah. You found flour? Yeah, we found Eloise <laughs> actually. Uh, well, I don't know whether I want to share this. But, well, yeah. Share it, share it. She basically it. bought a massive, massive like... I don't know how many kilograms, but it was I think like it's a seven kilogram bag. That a going baby on. elephant's yeah. weight or worth of flour. So, but she. Eloise been, is here. You can give us a nod. Yeah. What, 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 was it seven or fifteen? Fifteen yeah. kilos. So, so basically, a baby elephant. Um, and it took a month to get to our house um, because it was being delivered. But she's been amazing and baking us lots of bread. So I've not done the bread thing. Oh, I've made all my neighbours fat thing. by by giving <laughs> them cake. And I made a quiche the other day. Ooh, and I, I love a quiche. So I made the quiche and I thought, mm, okay, is it okay? And then I ate the whole quiche. Oh my! Amazing. <laughs> Great. It was a big quiche over a course of a number of days. And oh, I yeah. wrapped it up and I thought, oh, I'll give some to the neighbours. But I was just like, oh, it's a good oh, lunch. it's gone already. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love a quiche. That's so so nice of you. Uh, well, I did quiche for I did quiche for Christmas. I mean, what a weird thing to <laughs> no, do. No, quiche for Christmas um, is good. But you know, I, I normally do the cherry tomato and 
either olive and basil mm. or basil as you like to call basil. it it's quite Lovely. nice okay oh, so so when it comes to sort of you know food and cuisines and, and you know you're saying you like thai and stuff like that mm. is there any sort of food that you don't like I do not, as much as I have tried to make myself like them, I just do not like olives. Oh, do you know why? I cannot do an olive. Why? Because you've not been to Italy enough. Uh, I have not been to Italy at go. all. That, the, the main reason why is because you go to restaurants in Italy and you sit there and they're just so chilled, right? Yeah. So you don't get served for ages. Okay. okay. You, so you they give you alcohol, yeah. of course. It's a nice wine. And there's always on the table olives and bread. Yeah. Like <sighs> always. And because it's from where it's from, so it's from Italy. Yeah they are like the best mm. and because you're so hungry and you're like i just can't eat any more bread because I, I look like a bread sandwich myself <laughs> so you're like okay i'll go and oh, i'll have an olive and like after a while you start okay. acclimatizing to olive my friend's kid said oh can i have an olive and she's like six and i was like oh my goodness <laughs> you must have been to italy lots <laughs> I was trying to think of some Italian words then, but I couldn't think of any. But I think she has been to Italy. That's why. <laughs> yeah, Honestly, exactly. that's it. So, I think maybe, yeah, maybe that's what I need to do. Maybe if I go on my next trip to Italy with the with the gals, yeah. I'll I'll love olives when I come back. That's it. We're going to find out. We'll watch the space. You come back for like series seven and be like, oh, I love olives. I bought you some olives. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I feel like they must be sweeter there or something because all the olives that I've had are just a bit... They just taste a bit funky and I just don't really like it. Yeah, and I think it's what you have it with. And mm. I think like you, you really have to kind of think about, um, you know, that kind of picky stuff that they yeah, have. like a tapas. Oh, mm. God, yes. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of anything. Kind of, but yet again, I really hate sharing. So I don't really yeah. understand how <laughs> that works. Not sharing food kind of um, I mean, I am a big fan of food and I'm trying to be really well behaved mm. um, throughout this kind of not being able to go out for a long time and all that stuff yeah. and, and trying to do some exercise and stuff. Yes. Like, do you have like a regime of what you do? And like, is there a sort of like you you make you always have breakfast and then you always have lunch, or you have dinner, you have you know supper or whatever? Well, or do you? Yeah, I guess so. I'm quite like I I do definitely need to eat in the morning. Mm-hmm. I know some people can kind of skip breakfast. Yeah, me. But can you? Yeah, wow. I don't. Yeah, I'll go out and I'll do some exercise and I work, I'll have like a massive lunch. Okay, right. I see, like brunch. That that word annoys me. I don't know why. <laughs> brunch. <laughs> it's very partial, isn't it? It's I mean, so I yeah. So I definitely have to eat breakfast um and then by lunchtime i am hungry again so i will just eat the same like See, I, I, breakfast I, makes me hungry that's the problem right, i get okay. more hungry yeah uh, okay so uh bethany's best thing about food i'm gonna say thai thai oh yeah definitely yeah, i think yeah, we're gonna have 100%. to order it mm, oh my gosh yeah guess what we're talking about <laughs> next oh um i don't know tell me don't i mean it's written on your pad oh yeah uh music <laughs> You need to set the pace in your own time, yeah. Before we talk about music, Bethia, what is on Bethia's Beats today? My chosen artist for this week is the very talented Sam Hurst. His sound is a combination of R&B and hip-hop, and he takes influence from the likes of Black and Bryson Tiller. And for me, it's just the tone of his voice is just so effortless. I absolutely love it. We've actually been working on some new music in the studio together, so hopefully that will be out very soon, so keep your eyes peeled on social media. Um, And he's very recently released his latest single, Passion. Here's a snippet of it playing in the background, and to listen to the full song, it will be played at the end of the podcast, along with all the details of his social media and where to find the song and they will be linked below Bethia yeah <laughs> it's your best thing it is and we're talking music yes oh yeah I mean this is a big thing for you it isn't it really, really is. it's a very big part of my of my career my life <laughs> when 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 did you first start getting into music what was the first song you remember hearing <sighs> probably genie in a bottle <laughs> I like how we get on that straight away. Just a bit of Christian Aguilera. Honestly, Aguilera. like I, we had a pop princess CD. It was like bright pink, just full of all of the queens of pop back in the nineties, and it was my favorite thing ever. Like it also had a like a music video side, so we just watch all of the music videos as well on the TV. That probably do the a dance? bit inappropriate. Could you do but, the dance? Um, no, I mean, no. Genie in the Bottle is inappropriate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, um, yeah, well, I didn't know that when I was... No, you know, of course not. Six. No, it's, it's the same it's as like if you go to Panto. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't understand those jokes your parents are laughing at. It's yeah, fine. Exactly. 
uh, when, when, you, when, you, when you're like six years old and you go, I want to have sex yeah. on the beach. And your parents are like, what? Yeah. Where did you How find much you need yeah. in a bottle, baby? You got to rub me that way. <laughs> Oh my gosh, yes. And she Maybe. was young when she did that as well. Yeah, I know. So young. And Brittany. I mean, all and JoJo, them. she's back. Oh my goodness. Such a fan of JoJo. She's like, so good. I've got her tickets for her because she was doing a show in oh. Scotland and uh, obviously it's been put back to next year and stuff. But yeah. Oh, she is the best. So she's... good. I mean, that, I and mean, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to Jeannie in a bit in a minute. But like, <laughs> if you think about your career and you think about everything you've kind of done, are you so glad you didn't do it when you were super young? Um, or do now, you wish you did? You now, did. yes. Like, now, definitely, it's super important if, you know, you want to be an artist or a musician to kind of just really take a step back and kind of see the best ways that you're going to get to where you want to be. Like, kind of have an end goal or, like, a, a few goals along the way and just work out, okay, right, I need to be in contact with these sort of people or I need to be pushing my music in this sort of way so it's just kind of it's really good to kind of take a step back and like reflect and also I feel like I've come quite a long way um since I started doing this so and I also am making such different music now to what I was making when I first started releasing so and it also hasn't been that long either so it's it's also like an amazing kind of jump that I'm quite proud to look back on i mean let's go right back to the beginning you started putting music out on social uh you know streaming services mm-hmm. and stuff like that in 2017 yeah yeah what was the first song you did can you remember um it was the first song that went on to the ep so i had an ep called hit of heaven um and had like a little like release party for it and everything it was very cute um it was the first song that i wrote for that was called holding on it was very like country vibes and I didn't realise at the time but everyone Did you not? Is it you not just really. it just sort of came out of you in that way and that's what was going on when you yeah, were writing stuff. I th- well, to be honest, I, th- I was listening to a lot and I was hugely inspired by Tori Kelly. Right. Um, she, well, who isn't? Uh, exactly. I mean, <laughs> she is absolutely killing it obviously at the moment, but I first started following her and kind of following her career path I guess when she was kind of first being discovered. So I just felt very connected to her and well, she wrote on guitar, so I tried to write on guitar. And I mean, I was never very good at guitar, but I just <laughs> played along and just wrote songs. That's the only way I kind of could get my music to be from my brain to to like something that people could listen to. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, so and that must be quite scary as well when you know. You, you, how old were you in in 2017? I was I was about like 18. Or so, yeah, is that right? Yeah. So I mean, I was I was writing. I've been writing since I was 12. Whoa. Um, so, but that was obviously not the best of material. <laughs> uh, and I, I mean, would, I still want to, I still want to hear this. <laughs> I mean, the song was, the first song that I wrote was called Secret Hideout. Ooh. And I don't know whether you remember this, Eloise, but I had, um, we had a girl living with us and she was around with her boyfriend and I was like, okay guys, so I'm going to be in the other room. I'm going to play this song that I've written. Um, you don't have to like listen or anything, but just kind of, you know, just, well, you can listen obviously. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I basically listen, just didn't listen. want them to like all come in the room and all like just make a fuss. I just wanted to like, you know, let them be in the other room and just listen from afar basically. But that was the first time that I'd, I'd played something in, in front of people that I, had written myself like written a full song myself and it was kind of a weird experience but I wouldn't say it was like an awful song I mean it was it was quite it was all right I want it I want it at your next gig please I'm gonna (laughs) request it oh my goodness that would be amazing I mean I mean you've come so far you released you know a couple of EPs a couple of songs and stuff like that but your mass the main EP that you've done is Mm -hmm. your latest one which is part one yeah You've been working with Mort. Yes, so me and uh, Mort or Morton, uh, we met uh, at ACM. So that was the university that we went to for two years. But I actually didn't meet him till my second year. Um, So I was writing all this stuff, but I was particularly at ACM when I was there. I was hugely influenced by R&B and I started kind of diving into that whole world of things um, as well as pop. Um, but I just kind of something clicked in me and I just thought okay I love all of the R&B melodies and all the sort of lyrics that go with it and the vibes so I just started writing in that way 
And he was just the perfect producer at that time to work with and collaborate with because he was influenced by exactly the same artists that I loved. So it was just like the perfect kind of pairing. And we we didn't really realize until we'd had a few sessions that we were like, okay, we could make this into like an actual collaborative project where we release together because not only is he a producer, he's also a producer artist. So his name is also on the EP, which is really amazing for me because I don't think I would have necessarily felt confident enough to put out material like that that was so different to what I was doing before um, without him so it's like the perfect kind of thing to put out and kind of make this new mark in my music they give you a good reason to step out of your safety box you know what I mean 100 percent. what was the first song you did was it boy it, yeah well we oh. we'd actually the first song we wrote was like a a dance track okay um and it just kind of came out in the session and it was it, looking back on it now it's actually quite a good song we might oh. pitch it to someone yeah you know? definitely <laughs> um but I was so proud of it and I thought oh my gosh I've never written a full song in a session with someone who I've never really met before like I just felt super proud of that moment and then I was like okay well we can just keep keep writing and see what comes out of it and then I think he kind of realized that R&B was the direction that I wanted to go in and yeah we just then we wrote boy banger oh i love that song it's like our little our little child (laughs) (laughs) and you played it on a show and you did like a live version of stuff Uh, and it was so i've got this compilation of the best bits of my show and it's it it ends it oh that's so lovely i mean uh, just in case anyone didn't know me and badia worked together on a bbc show but it's like one of our time (laughs) local bbc (laughs) BBC (laughs) show but it's fine um so uh, we'll get onto this a little later but what is next for you when it comes to music so me and Morton are still uh, working together, currently working in, in isolation, <laughs> um, uh, just doing Skype sessions and working on lots of music. So we've got, uh, obviously we've got part one out. So part two will hopefully be coming out. I did not see that name coming. <laughs> just going to say. I know, just right? feel that. That took you a long time. <laughs> <laughs> What's after that? We were then? very original with our titles, but um, <laughs> yes. You should name the like the, the part three, but m- make it like a different language. So yeah, part... Oh my gosh, that's a great idea. Part like dry. in Japanese. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I went German, but yeah. it's, like, it's the only one I knew. <laughs> like, can, can you count in Japanese? Oh is it? gosh, I, you know what? My old year three teacher used to count in Chinese to us, but I can't remember how to count to 10. Uh, big, up to, big up to them. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Bevia, obviously music is your life. It probably yeah. is the best thing out of everything, apart from family, of course. Yeah, you know, I love the family. Yeah. Your sister's looking at us, so we just yeah. have to say that. <laughs> um, but what would you say is the best thing for you about music? Probably just the connection that I get to it. Um, just, I also just love to sing as well. Like, I think, obviously, being an artist, it's about having, you know, or trying to have all of the different elements that go with being an artist and having your artistry but I've always just ever since I was so so tiny I've just loved to sing that's always been my passion and performing and being on stage has just that's just been like the forefront of everything and that's always what I've what I am going to be doing and will be doing forever. <laughs> I think it is. I think it is. Well, that's Bethia's best thing with music. And I think it's probably like singing is your best yeah, thing. I yeah, we'll so. say that. <laughs> uh, next up, we're going to be finding out what something random Bethia's brought us. I don't know what it is yet. <laughs> Bethia. Hiya. Your best thing something random yes well i mean not too random for me but uh well i I wanted to chat a bit about songwriting okay because i know we've talked obviously about music but um songwriting has definitely been like an escapism for me um just like throughout my teens um and just in general in life because they're quite deep when i listen to your lyrics and stuff like i'm like wow it's like you you've lived like quite a yeah. life but also I know I'm not saying that all of it's real because yeah. at the same time you know you can say I write about other people mm, a lot 100% that's what I love about it is that 
is so expressive and you can literally have a sentence or a word jotted down in your phone and you're like oh this could be a cool title and like, I mean you you've been writing songs while we're doing this podcast yeah. <laughs> you're literally like, la, 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 been jotting it down on my sheet little melodies going on and stuff like that. it never stops does it it's all, that's honestly a good thing. it's so true I have the biggest like notes and voice memo section on my phone where I just like every time I'm out or like have an idea pop into my head I'm just like right okay that's got to go down otherwise I will forget it do you ever listen back and be like what did I say oh yeah oh yeah (laughs) like literally sometimes I wake up or like actually I don't necessarily like wake up but like I'm like half asleep and I'm like okay I've just got this like melody idea and then I like mumble it into my phone and I'm like listen to it in the next morning I'm like what was that? <laughs> like, I do what it all was that? the time. What was I saying? I what was that melody? If I was mean, I'd make you play one. But I won't. It's fine. Because <laughs> oh, I've got God. some terrible ones myself. It's I'm just like, oh. also really awful at naming them. Like, I have literally hundreds and hundreds. And I I name, like, the key one. Like, oh. so say if I, like, do the... the I'm so weird. I, I name all of mine. Yeah, I need, I need to get better at that. Yeah. I definitely need to get better at that. But, oh well. <laughs> so, okay. So you started songwriting pretty young. You said around uh, 12 when you started writing songs yeah. started, like, well singing songs anyway yeah. was it around that sort of time or was it before um well yeah writing when I was 12 but singing way before um so like I was part of a perf- performing arts school mm. um starlet dance school shout out starlet um, mm-hmm. yes, <laughs> um yeah so that was a big part of me growing up and and just kind of feeling more confident on stage and singing in front of people like, that's such a like it is a very tricky thing to do when you first start doing it it's like the nerves and and also singing your own songs in front of people I mean writing these things because they're your kind of you know the stuff that's happened to you or people think has happened to you you've got to sing these songs and and you're like you're gonna like this yeah literally like you're putting yourself out there totally um but I also really enjoy yeah taking like a scenario that maybe hasn't even happened to me ever but I'm just inspired by it and then just writing a whole song and concept like that like certainty as the song certainty that i have out um it's plug 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 yeah yeah, um it's like that whole scenario has never ever happened to me and i i it might do in the future but that's kind of a nice thing for me because i can go back to it and like listen to those lyrics and kind of connect to it that way but it's just like a really sassy song that i just had to get out you know <laughs> <laughs> I always think when it comes to songwriting and I've had this before on some songs that I never put, put out but some people just knew and um, they as soon as you put a song out it's it's actually not yours anymore 100% it's, it's theirs yeah. it's yeah. their story to now make and, and, yeah. and how it makes people feel because the energy from your writing a, you know a song in your, in your room or, or in your living room or just on waiting for a bus yeah. you know what I mean and then if when you put it out it's people sort of go oh that means this relationship or that means this moment 100 percent, definitely know. I've had that a lot uh recently and it's yeah it's so nice I think that's also something that a lot of songwriters and artists will say is that it's just the best feeling ever when people connect to what you've written it's just like because obviously you've put so much emotion and time into thinking about that particular word that you wanted to put there or like that particular melody that fitted so well with that lyric it's just so so nice to to kind of have people go like engage and and just connect with it that's like the best thing ever do you have any advice for some you know like a little bethia out there oh. and they want to you know they want to do a bit of singing or do a bit of writing but they're also quite scared and nervous because it's it's hard to put yourself out there yeah definitely what advice would you give to those sort of people i would say definitely just jot down any ideas that you have like even if they're awful like because i have so many really tragic ideas i'm putting on my hand me too just uh not that i'm putting my hand because bethy has got loads i've i've got ten thousand more i tell you oh no i mean it's just important just to get them down and just have them there because i have like i was saying i had have a, a massive notes section in my phone and i just jot down whenever i can but i just go back and look at old ideas and i'm like this could spark something new for this particular song that I'm working on today so definitely jotting things down and just melodies just singing them into your phone and also just being inspired by the artists that you feel most connected to because I definitely love pop but more so now is like an R&B kind of stage for me but it might be in 10 years time that I love like country music country's you know? back then <laughs> I'll be back you're the original back. stuff country folk, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, and I didn't even realize I was doing it but 
yeah so just kind of taking all inspiration that you can and just kind of figuring it out because it's not going to happen overnight definitely not like I've learned that and every artist that I've spoken to has learned that it's just time and just working at it being very determined I think you just have to have a lot of determination definitely amazing okay so what's up next what's coming up obviously you got part two yes or part, part two, whatever or you want to call part it yeah. trois. Trois. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's three but oh well <laughs> you, say you do speak French right? was that twi- twi- three isn't it <laughs> I was thinking of the next oh, one, you know. No. <laughs> Eloise was looking at us like, no, no, no. She's like, what are you doing? Why it's fine. So yeah, so you've got that. Also, you said you're going to be doing some solo stuff. Yeah, so I am working on music that is just kind of going to re- be released under Bethia, just Bethia. So that's also very exciting, but also quite daunting, um, just because I have been writing and releasing music with Mort for so long. Um, well, not so long, but it feels like a long time. Um, is it dragging? Is yeah. it? <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, Mort. Mort. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's never a drag, never a drag. But um, You've learned a lot, though, haven't you? A hundred percent, definitely. And it would just be nice to kind of put out some material that is just from me and my own experience but yeah we'll obviously continue to work with Morton because he's amazing where can we people find your music you can find it just under Bethia which is B-E-T-H-I-A um <laughs> just in case <laughs> um uh yeah on Spotify um any major streaming platform you can go and check it out and it's just Bethia Music on Instagram and Official Bethia on Facebook yeah, so go check out all my stuff. I was just about to ask you about your social media. I don't need to. Done. Bethy, you've been an amazing guest. Thank, thank you so much. Aww. And thank you for doing Bethy's Beach. You're awesome. You no, can hear I her love it. every single podcast, bringing us some of the best in new music as well. But thank you, you're a star. Oh, thank you, Dan. Thank you for having me. It's been the best. You're going to come back? A hundred percent, of course. I've got, I've got to invite you first. I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bethy, everyone, and uh, see you next time. A massive thank you to our wonderful guest, Bethia. Also, thank you to Adam Harris for doing his fat chicken. And of course, the person who keeps us all together, Mr. Professor Ollie Giyu. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The music in the background you can hear is by myself, Tom Baxter and Jimmy Lundy. The artwork was created by JMD. See you next time. Now, Bethia's Beats, and this is Sam Hurst with Passion. You need to set the pace in your own time, yeah No, baby, it ain't a race Just open your mind, yeah Thinking about you on a day, day yeah. I don't need no one else but you beside me yeah. The way that you're making me feel lately yeah. I cannot help myself, I cannot help myself with the passion, day, passion, day, passion, day, can't give up my passion for you. Passion, day, passion, day, passion, day, can't give up my passion for you, babe. Don't want nothing new, babe. Can't get over you, babe. And all the times I was all up in it, never took it for granted. Loving your assets, girl, you're impressive, yeah Girl, you're Trying to keep up with you, no one can pass it, you, yeah Loving the way you move, let me go introduce myself There's no one else I'd rather be spending my time with Don't think that you need no reminding Passion, yeah, passion, yeah, passion
hi guys uh well done well done for sitting through all that dross uh hope you enjoyed it again this week uh this is the fat chicken uh this week's was something about monster munch what are they are they monsters or feet who cares um the answer is feet see you next time